What's going on, everybody? Hi, everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon. No matter where you are in the world, I'm Hassan Piker, and this is the Hassan Abbey Broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles. We are live once again. Boys, girls, MBs, we are live and alive. Uh, I got started as quickly as possible here, folks, because, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm late. And why am I late is a question you might be asking yourself. And the reason why I am late, of course, is because I was too fucking busy uh, playing Rust last night until late into the afternoon. You can blame Racy for that one. But uh, I apologize for being uh, only half an hour late. You were setting up an E-Trade account? Don't, don't do that. Don't, I would never do that. Not even because of like an ethical conundrum or anything like that by making money off of your capital, but literally because I am one, too stupid, or rather too smart to do stonks. Especially stonks that revolve around a, a uh, bubble. A short squeeze bubble on steroids. Uh, but uh, I, I wish you all the best of luck. Hopefully you figure out when to pull out. And hopefully your parachute cord is strong. Regardless though. You may be smart, but not 50k to 22 million smart. I mean, guys, we don't know the offset of that. We don't know the, the other side of that. And I'm seeing a lot of movement in this community of like lefties who are losing their minds over fucking, uh, oh, yeah, stock I trading all of a sudden, sister. like day trading. So excited to be a dead and, uh, company. we gotta, we will talk about that eventually, but you know, chill the fuck out guys. Don't do anything stupid. Okay. Don't bet the farm on a fucking as five on a meme over here especially at this stage when you're literally buying into something that has been uh overvalued by like 10x as a consequence of this push hassle 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 anyway just don't be risky don't make stupid don't make stupid decisions um there's a lot of news to cover today There's a lot of good news to cover. Oh, yeah. oh, I know why someone posted this. This is, oh my God. This is literally what I was going to talk about yesterday. That's Jack resurfaced this friend of the show, old friend of the show who used to be on the show, uh, on this broadcast, Jack Wagner resurfaced this old video from the alpha house. Oh, we're definitely going to look at this in a second, dude. Political commentator and entertainer hassle has buff. Okay, I gotta fucking turn off this like hide map shit. This is like Garbo, dude. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta neighbor land. Yeah, this hot key is not working, folks. It is not working. Eliminate. Hi. Chat. Am I awake? There it is. Okay, we fixed it. first sub from my new job yes of course there is a high snobiety front page uh interview that i did with uh fashion magazine high snobiety uh, i read it earlier this morning but uh excited to uh read it again there's a lot of news to cover there's some personal news to cover i did this interview a while back i'm proud of you hussein um, Joseph Robin and Biden might be getting involved in the, uh, stonks convo. The meme stonks convo might be getting, uh, regulation from big government stonks. in the form of Joseph Robin and Biden. He's going to call on the SEC to cut the malarkey, Jack. Anyway, in personal news, I did not go to the gym today because it's way too fucking cold. 
And uh, because of that, I have not... I have not worked out today. I'm going to try to do a couple... What are you drinking out of? The skulls of my enemies. Skull! My friend. Yes, it is cold in Los Angeles. Two days in a row, I did not go to the gym. But today, I am going to put the weight vest on and work out with the weight vest on. Is that a pimple? Yes. Bro, it's 55 week. Guys, the gyms are outdoors. Like, working in fucking 55 degrees is not easy anyway. But yeah, it is It is cloudy and cold in uh, California, Los Angeles. It is no longer sunny, nor is it warm, folks. And let me tell you something. 55, not good. Okay? Not good at all. Uh, all right. Let's just sit. let it get started. It looks much clearer if that makes you feel better. Um, let's do it. There's not a lot to talk about in personal news. So you know what? It's time to welcome the Normans into our home, folks. Let's do it. Let's bring in the... Let's talk. Let's uh, let's open up the daycare, baby. GameStop, go there. Daycare is now open. Our stonks will day traders take on a hedge fund, or will Biden? Cut the malarkey. Will Biden implement the malarkey protocol? On the SEC. Latest update and some good news on right, COVID. Has right, has right, has right. Has right. Executive orders on climate change. There's so much that happened, dude. There's a lot going on in the world of news, folks. There is a lot going on. No, That's Biden did not end the private prison malarkey. I talked about this yesterday. Not only was that executive order basically just a revamp of the Obama era executive order, especially because private prisons only are, are, are a tiny fraction of the problem in the federal prison system, but it is within his jurisdiction. But even then, within his jurisdiction, he did not do all that he could as far as literally stopping private prison contracts from uh, or, or uh, the, the ICE and Department of Homeland Security utilizing private uh, prison in, and using private facilities. It's still bullshit. <laughs> so it's not as good as you think it is, folks. I'm sorry to do that. Nicaro criticized you for being happy about GME. Wait, why? Wait, really? Gang shot. I thought everyone, I thought this was like a unique instance where like literally everyone would be on board with this. I'm surprised that anyone, because like the villain here is so fucking perfect. The villain here is literally hedge funds. And barring like extreme circumstances, you are talking about hedge funds that require you to have at least a million dollars you require you to put in at least two hundred and fifty thousand dollars require you to uh you know require to be the very very wealthy okay this is not like people's nest eggs or anything like that so the villains are perfect their actions are perfect which is an exploit of overshorting uh like overshorting a company literally pushing the company into a state of disrepair uh, devaluing the stock, undermining the company's value further beyond what it should be, right? Valuation is already a fucking weird game. All right, what am I doing? I'm talking about all this. Hikaru is probably pissed because he has money in a hedge fund. He probably does. Same He's thing. a very wealthy guy. And look, you're a very wealthy guy and you put your money in a hedge fund. Like, I can't fucking tell you not to do that. Why? No one operates the way I do, okay? Like no one, no one is, is let's fucking stupid like I am, no longer. Let's all do the Conga but no regardless longer. of where you put your money or what you fucking do, uh, with your own money, like you look at the situation and you see hedge funds behaving in the way that they have been behaving for a very long time, which is still technically market manipulation, 
or stock price manipulation when it's a hedge fund operating in this way um like you got to recognize that someone literally okay, taking advantage of that is exactly the same principle from a neo i will i sometimes love making the neoliberal argument for the very same things that neoliberals are criticizing and i can build it out for you perfectly if you are to say if you are to make the argument that shorting is actually not unethical and shorting is good because it's a market corrective measure that showcases the inherent flaws uh, within a company that is overvalued by shorting it and lowering the stock prices and therefore uh, pushing the company to the verge of bankruptcy because that company was already slated to be bankrupt, right? Because it was not a profitable institution or whatever. Then you can literally say this exact same thing about pushing the fucking... Uh, about this big push that you're seeing from the collective action over at the subreddit Wall Street Pets. Why? Well, if you fucking over leverage or if you over short a company like this and you literally don't hedge uh, uh, appropriately and you try to make as much money as you possibly can off of uh, off of this sort of fairly unethical practice, then yeah, you're going to get fucking owned and you're going to get fucking wrecked. And that's precisely what's happening right now. So even from a neoliberal free market principle standpoint you literally are ironically uh ironically doing market corrective behavior that's the free market that's literally the fucking free market sucks to suck welcome normans i will be watching the shamath interview he is very good at just like ripping apart uh cnbc hosts uh, apparently they were like crying and shit the car was about happy about gme too but he said that our economy that allows this to happen which apparently means you can be happy about it our economy allows us to happen the reason why i'm happy about it is because this is a, an inherent flaw like a, a very clear glaring obvious flaw in the way that our stock market is designed and I think this exposes that flaw. And watching so uh, money bags, shit bags, and money bags who literally out. fucking decry uh, uh, at, at any like smell of regulation are now turning around and literally fucking begging those uh, those who hold on to institutional power and control to please regulate the market a little bit because the little guy is now finally fucking us for one moment, for a brief moment. Yeah, fuck that. Of course that's going to be fucking awesome for someone like myself who overall believes usury is a sin. Okay? I mean, uh, memes. That's memes. But, like, I, I don't like the stock market. I don't engage in stock trading. I wish uh, I wish we could have a Thank system set in place that was more ethical than, you know, faceless, lifeless capital owners literally fucking making money off of their pre-existing capital. Okay? Like accumulating capital off of their pre-existing capital rather than actually putting the fucking work and the sweat of their brow uh, in the form of, of uh, some kind of labor because labor ultimately is a very fulfilling endeavor and can give your life a lot of meaning, right? And I don't mean like literally backbreaking labor or cleaning up toilets or some shit. I mean like literally anything that you do uh, that's that gives your life a little bit more value, especially if you lack alienation from your labor. That's my belief. That's why I live the way I do. That's why I fucking spend all of my waking moments doing something that I love and making money exclusively off of doing what I love. Right? You should put your money into a Roth IRA or mutual fund. Yeah, that's that's a great example. Roth IRAs and Roth IRAs, 401ks are basically uh, another way that we have privatized so have or financialized rather a fundamental government function okay social security and pension programs back in the day and pensions have a lot of understandable weaknesses like companies fucking going uh under and GME. and uh, you know uh, that sort of thing but like social security is a safety net that should literally eliminate the need for a fucking uh a 401k we have literally financialized something and privatize something that the government should be handling for you right completely something that the government should be handling for you but having said that 
I would never in a fucking million years Attention get mad at someone who is making, uh, who's putting some of their, uh, nest egg that they literally toil the land for, okay? And break their backs over by, by adding a piece of that into their fucking 401k so they can not die and live the rest of their days out once they are finally able to retire with a shred of dignity. Like, it's insane. Love you, chat. Current short borrow rate for GME is almost 40%. That's a fee for a short seller. That's a fee. Short seller pays the stockholder to borrow their stock to create a short position. Usually that's around 0 0.30, not 40%. Yeah, at the end of this push is going to be uh, whoever whoever buys the dip. Wh whoever shorts at the appropriate time at, at, at the perfect peak is going to be literally making gorillion dollars. Like one gorillion dollar. But I don't know when that moment will come. And also, I'm not going to fucking uh, become an investor. And you also literally have to be safe and don't fucking be an idiot. Okay. Like, let's see what happens on Friday. The number one Dota streamer has a surprisingly good take. Are gonna mold at me, and everybody that's involved in stocks is gonna mold at me. But listen carefully. All of it is just literally running on pure ass copium. Everything is a fucking pyramid scheme scam. Everything. Like, where do you find the value? Like, it's just you know, like it's it's just propped up by people saying oh, it will go up. Just hold, lol. Hold the GME. Hold Bitcoin, lol. It's just all of it. I mean. Just wanted to tell you that you yeah, completely changed that's finance my capitalism to a T. I'm sorry, some good but that's literally how family. finance, like that is how doing. finance capitalism works. Okay. That's, that's, he's right. It's all, it's all speculative. Yes, there are assets tied to this valuations. The yes, there are, so you know, uh, re there's revenue tied to valuations. But for the most part, yeah, that's, that's straight up. It is what it is. It's gambling. And that's why I say what I say. It's literally fucking gambling. Anyway, to the people who are, Six months the irony, more, of course, in all of this, Love I'm sorry chat. to say this, but the irony in all of this is literally people that are yelling about fucking uh, GameStop Hussain, what do you stocks think of having a partner being overvalued are the exact same people that are like, no, you don't understand, you fool. Tesla stock is, is based on the speculation that they're a technology company. So actually, uh, regardless of the fact that they're not producing anywhere near the amount of cars, for example, as, the, as, as uh, other competitive uh, car manufacturers, what they're doing is something completely different. And therefore, their valuation is actually not higher. Literally, it's the chat. same fucking principle, dude. And what you are doing on the one end is getting mad at fucking Redditors for uh, pumping up the fucking stocks uh, on, on GameStop. Here, I'll make the argument for GameStop. Actually, the Chewy person getting on board, getting on the board of GameStop is a... a, a a phenomenal change of pace for them. They obviously had big pushes in, in the holiday season when they were selling a lot of fucking video game consoles. And if they were to restructure and maybe even fucking liquidate some of these insane fucking stocks uh, that they have now, they could potentially go out and buy an esports organization, which is a growing sector. And therefore, all of a sudden, they have a Good tremendous amount of upside for their future. They could restructure their entire company now because stats. now they're valued in the fucking billions. Great. There you go. There you go. That is that is literally no different than what Almost. the fuck people do to justify 
e describing to you why Tesla has a has basically no fucking ceiling in their valuation. Also, just because I'm a fucking himbo who like shits on the like stock the market all the part. goddamn time doesn't mean I literally fundamentally do not understand these concepts. Okay? I know a lot of you fucking neoliberals come in here every goddamn day and think you're so fucking smart because, you know, I, I shit on stocks and don't have a fucking credit card. But it but I personally choose not to participate in this shit rather than, oh, I don't participate in it because I'm too stupid. My brain doesn't work good. Stocks only go up five head. Except Wall Street Bets loves Tesla. Yeah, because it's the same shit, dude. It's literally the same shit. It's the same shit. Isn't TTS annoying to talk over? Fuck capitalism, it's actually. In each other's mouth. <laughs> seen Amelia Watson's huge Yo, this so dude's awesome. Okay, never feet. mind. Her and Guris should get married and have little shark. Will babies. day traders take on a hedge fund or will Biden implement the malarkey protocol on the SEC? Latest update and some good news on COVID. Let's go. I'm live. I forgot to fucking uh, welcome the Normans into our home, dude. It just, all of this sucks. Ultimately, it's fun and I like it because I'm fucking uh, doomer pilled and black pilled and shit. So I, I enjoy a brief moment of celebration where I, I, I revel in watching these fucking highfalutin, you know, big city lawyers and Yale graduate hedge fund managers who have uh, relied on their extensive networks of uh, intergenerational wealth recipients for far too fucking long. I love that, like, some fucking dipshit uh, on Wall Street sweat. Bets who literally took like $600 in fucking uh, uh, additional money that he had for the first time in his goddamn life and his like pathetic fucking existence was able to turn that $600 into $6,000 for the time being, okay? And I hope, the, I hope they can do this more. I hope that this kind of collective action literally distributes money directly from the fucking billionaires back to at Stone least the upper Spider. middle class and the middle class individuals who are engaging in these sorts of shenanigans. Ultimately, in the long run, the house always wins. And I'm sorry to tell this to you guys, but <clears throat> Has. institutional traders, these uh, establishment, uh, uh, these establishment traders, uh, institutional traders, they are the ones who build the fucking house. This is their house. They're going to make the money in the end. Someone is going to make a fuckload of money ultimately when uh when people start pulling out and you have to remember that so don't be fucking stupid i'm not giving you investment advice i'm a fucking idiot i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about Argent. but like literally go, don't Argent. be fucking stupid and put like six you know your house and and the car and, and, the car and, and take out a mortgage and like do the, this dumb shit because you're gonna get fucking owned because no one gives a fuck about you you are not protected Ooh. if there's anything that you can learn from this story if there's anything you can learn from this story, it is that when hedge funds fucking manipulate stock prices by literally overshorting and pushing companies into a state of fucking disarray, months, la, 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 that's la, la, not considered la, 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 market la, 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 manipulation. La, 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 la. But when you get together and engage in a collective action of liking a stonk and, and uh, you know, uh, taking it up to the fucking moon and holding it there for as long as it takes for these motherfuckers to get robbed dry, well, then that's actually manipulation and that's no good. And the only principle there is the exact same principle that we have seen time and time again. It's the same exact principle when Mitch McConnell says, well, I'm sorry, we can't give you $2,000 because, you know, one poor person getting $2,000 might mean that the economy is uh, completely falling apart. They will die. These motherfuckers will die before they give you a fucking breadcrumb, okay? They will die before they give you a single fucking breadcrumb. They do not want you to dream. They do not want you to believe. They do not want you to even think they that you are entitled those. to any sort of compensation beyond the lifetime of toiling the goddamn soil like the fucking peasant you are, okay? They do not want you to pick your head up and look at the sky and for a brief moment recognize that like, fuck, maybe I could get more, okay? $a.m.c. 
Dolan anyway. knock until Friday to the moon. Sam Dolan knock until Friday to the moon. Sam Dolan knock until Friday to the moon. Sam Having Dolan said knock that, though, Friday rise up, gamers. Moon. I mean, it's Dolan fucking knock awesome. Friday to the moon. People <sighs> Blackrock is the little guy. See, that's what I'm saying. No, I know Blackrock is not the little guy, dude. Why do you think you're making a snarky fucking comment when like we are in agreement? Like, ultimately, it came out that BlackRock still owns 13% of GameStop, so they're fucking making out like gangbusters, all right? But they own literally everything. They own the stock market, dumbass. Good luck making a trade that doesn't fucking at touch uh, hand, BlackRock so in some way, you, or at least some, very some form of fucking gigantic hedge fund. Yesterday, and you never saw it. At least I never saw you see it. Sorry for being a TTS Andy Pogo. Let's hope GameStop, AMC, and Nokia goes to the moon and more hedge funds lose billions and all credibility. Anyway. Wait. People literally realizing they can pick themselves up using the system they advocate for, but it costs them some money and they get 1,000x Timmy from their friend and now JRB is watching the situation. What? Stop lurking young kids to this. You are irresponsible. Really? I'm irresponsible by describing the circumstances of a situation while simultaneously telling you not to make fucking idiotic decisions and like uh, get in on a fucking meme hype. If, if anything, I'm the only person making a, a, a responsible take on here just because your brain processing power lacks the capability to understand so exactly the words that are coming out of my mouth doesn't mean I'm fucking irresponsible. It just means you're a dumbass. Oh, I'm too stupid to understand right, what you're stop. saying. So it's your fault, not mine. Anyway. Three months Pog helping Arjan make his two cents an hour. <sighs> even in this minor victory, even in this seemingly minor victory for the retail investor, which is not exactly the little guy to begin with. I mean, you got to have at least some kind of fucking breadcrumbs that you uh, stashed away to be able to do that. So it's not like, I mean, there are actually a lot of fucking poor people that engage in this. It is, it is basically like retail, uh, like day oh, trading and, and uh, this sort of like uh, retail investing is, is basically like the, the the stupid tax that's implemented on people that uh, go and and you know I try buy lottery tickets. Off my one share, it is kind of like me that. Four dollars and twenty five cents or eleven bucks in store credit. What should I do? Take store but, credit. But yeah, ultimately, for the first time ever, people have been able to at least like uh, see the number value go up in their accounts. Okay. Time well spent. And even in that circumstance, it's not the little guys that are going to make the most money. It's still the big guys that are going to make the most money. BlackRock is one of the greatest examples of this. Okay. You're hearing about BlackRock. Uh, Robin Hood is making a fuckload of money. BlackRock that very same hedge fund. That very same hedge They're fund that uh, that uh, engages in high frequency US trading, GDP like the thing. the market maker or whatever the fuck it's called, the one that literally bailed out uh, the other hedge fund that they're robbing blind right I'm now. So that hedge fund Citadel I'm is making money of off of literally Can all of this. What the GME situation is and why it's not bad. not seventy two. I'm talking about Citadel. So it's like these guys are not going to go away. Like. They, they literally bailed out Melvin Capital so they could, or Citadel isn't a hedge fund, whatever. So, rich people are not going to, rich people are going to find a way to make more money off this. I used to be a dumb guy on Wall Street Bets and Lost Big trying to get out of poverty and I don't recommend it for anyone. Robinhood is such a leech with the free stock invites while they seep money from you. Yeah. They literally sell your positions. Well, not your positions, but like what you're trading to these fucking high frequency traders too. So, um, thank you, Comrade Ryan, for the hundred gifted subs. Holy shit, poggers! Uh, we are going to talk about uh, Enrique Tario. Uh, shocked to find out, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the Proud Boys leader was an FBI informant. Hussain, wow, this is a great interview. So weird. Did you watch it yet? So weird. So shocking. Uh, my surprise Pikachu face, dude. Anyway, 
let's watch let's get right into it i i, I already beefed it up i already fucking gave you an intro to the story like no other holy shit it's time to fucking learn a little bit more about stocks but more importantly let's take a look at the gamestop story about GameStop. And and how people are fucking losing their minds while they're trying to simultaneously comprehend what the fuck is going hassle. on, okay? And what do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? Are you still confused as to what's going on? Are you are you still unaware of what's happening? Hopefully, I will be able to offer a little bit of clarity. I did like three hours on this last night, and because I think it's a wonderful story, it's a very funny story. It is like a a a perfect story. Because it exposes the inherent flaws the in of uh, how costs. stocks are priced really out. Because my uh, it is, uh, it is actually the little guy taking advantage of a bubble for the first time. He was dunking on Larry we shall see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't turn into the dollar. fucking mortgage crisis. So uh, you know, that would not be great. But if you are confused, hopefully by the end of this, you will no longer be uh, confused. So let's start with uh, Fox News. Maybe this is a good example, or this is a good summarization of all Fox, the events that took place. Right now, but before we do that, I just lied to you. Before we do that, it is top of the hour every hour. It's time for a 60-second ad break. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and MBs, the first ad break of the day. Top of the hour every hour. We get a 60-second ad break. You... But no longer want to see the ads, all you need to do is subscribe, folks. You can do it for $5 or for free with your Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Here's the fucking ad. No. All right. Is up about 100 bucks. The price is $248 per share, up 68% from yesterday's close. Months, Earlier, it was above 300 Susan, you know what this is all about. Take me through the whole story, please. Social media average Joes versus big money players. And guess what? The army of average Joes are winning so far, at least for now. But the question is, for how long? Elon Musk even tweeting out his approval with his tweets rallying the stock 30% in the after hours. Elon Musk tweeting game stonk, which is what it's been called on that Reddit Wall Street bets page that's been behind the game stop moves. Also, Silicon Valley investor Jamath Palapatia says he's betting thousands of dollars on GameStop with the $115 calls for the month of February. Now, GameStop, as we know, has rallied a crazy, they call this insane, 700% this month, literally killing the shorts. Ken Griffin, Steve Cohen-backed Melvin Capital, now says that they have closed their shorts. Andrew left this morning at Citron Capital doing the same, both losing money on that trade. Now, GameStop is worth over $10 billion at last count. That's more than Under Armour, more than American Airlines. And GameStop, I would argue, was a... There you go. Yankees. If you want a better representation of how valuations are fucking complete bullshit in the way that the stock market works, this is it. Don't tell me about fucking supply and demand here. If you have no fucking product and your valuation as a corporation, as a company, as a publicly traded company, is higher than others that have, like, you know, actual international uh factories and and uh not only do they have brick and mortar retail on top of everything else but like literally robust online uh sales like e-commerce e uh, operations and shit like that this is basically blockbuster uh 2.0 getting a massive pump from a bunch of understandably frustrated day traders and and uh retail investors that frequent wall street bets because one of them acknowledged that uh you could actually make a fuckload of money if uh because of the way that the uh because of the way that uh these these hedge funds had uh overshorted the the GameStop stock when it was already fucking super low like buried it into the goddamn ground to make additional money Shorting is like betting. When you bet on a stock, it, that when you bet that a stock, the price of a stock is going to go, uh, is going to get lower uh, in the future. Okay, that's the easiest way to describe it. Fox is lying. Melvin didn't actually close out their positions. 
Yeah, I think they're lying so that they can get people to sell, I assume. The perfect target for this type of cartel of day traders. There's huge short interest in the stock, more than double the actual stock float, betting that GameStop was going to fall anyway. So this is a ripe opportunity, kill out the lopsided short trades on a company that doesn't have a lot of stock Just to trade. To you call this froth, I call it strategic. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm not sure whether we differ on this, but I'm calling it a casino, and I don't like it. I think it's going to change the... Again, dog, you're literally a commentator on Fox Business, bro. Like, it's like an MTV VJ saying these video... Uh, these really these video games are indecent. Keep up the great They're showing too much skin. Like, you're literally a fucking... You are in it. You're in the thick of it. You describe this kind of gambling as though Why it is completely sensible Michael? and makes sense every day. That's a part of your job is to normalize the stock market. It is so shocking that these very same people are acknowledging correctly, yeah, mind you, that it is literally gambling. Okay. Oh, it's not gambling when you're making accurate assessments. And recognizing that a company does not have hey, a good future ahead of it. The jungle, Looking at, uh, you know, trends and, and quarterly earnings, I've recognized that this is no longer gambling. It's like, dude, it is no different than saying it's going to hit red because I've seen, you know, uh, out of the 33% 30, of the time, it's hitting red. So it's going to hit red this next time. Like, it's just, that's it. That's what you're doing. You're, you're gambling. You just, you're gambling with, like, extra steps, okay? It's not gambling if you base it on vibes. I love how news channels talk about internet memes, Keck. The nature of investing, and I don't know what the fallout's going to be. So let's bring in Shah Galani, a longtime market watcher on this program. I say it's a casino-like atmosphere. My question is, does it spill over and hurt the rest of the market? Someone said it's actually undervalued. No, it was undervalued when it was at like $2, okay? And they yeah. were still overshorting it. It is not undervalued when it's literally valued at a higher fucking number than, than uh, uh, Under Armour, okay? You're insane. <laughs> like... <laughs> Stonks on my 15th month. You're Betters. fucking crazy to say that it's still undervalued, okay? Which is fine. It's whatever. Like, you know, we're, we're just memeing. Market, what say you? No, it will not spill over. It will not impact the market one iota. It's just what has been going on at Wall Street for many, many, many years, if not as long as I can remember, and certainly long before I started trading 40 years ago. And I think your nearest best insight on what's happening is the comment from Elon Musk. Elon Musk is cheering on the short covering and the rallying stock because that's exactly what he did with his stock for many, many, many years, Stuart. Tesla had been shorted infinitely for, for so many years. And what happened? Every time he put out some good news, the stock rose, the shorts had to cover, They're and investors, retail investors kept plowing into the stock. So this is the exact same story that's going on in GameStop. So sell. Elon Musk has been this the beneficiary to the point of the fact that he is now the richest man in the world. So that's why he's cheering <laughs> on GameStop. This is just part of the Wall Street game. Well, let me... Yeah, Elon Musk hates shorts, and yet... And yet, suspiciously, uh, whenever, whenever those covers come back, uh, his his stock price has fucking benefited tremendously from it. But anyway, um, I mean that's literally this. And and I do understand why Elon Musk hates uh, shorting. If you're a fucking CEO, I'm my boy. Uh, if you're a CEO, of course you're gonna fucking hate shorting. Like it, it is indecent. But what you are doing is basically if you have enough money and if you have enough influence. You can literally try and in a lot of circumstances actively drive down the stock prices of a fucking company. Doesn't matter what their assets are. Doesn't matter. You can literally fucking say, again, if you have enough influence, you could technically fucking drive the value of a stock down, a stock price down by shorting it. Okay. So Stonks. yeah, it's not great. 
of course people are fucking mad and that's precisely why there is like an entire industry built around defending it and uh those who want to defend it say things like no actually shorting is good because it's corrective market behavior it's exposing the flaws within a company as i uh briefly mentioned earlier on and you can say the exact same thing about what's happening with uh the actions of wall street bets and those fucking uh retail investors on wall street bets pumping up the fucking price of gamestop they are engaging in a corrective market action by recognizing that hedge funds that over leverage or over short are uh, a, a a stock well below what it's supposed to be are gonna get fucking clapped up because there's literally an infinite uh, dollar value that you can take out of them if they do such a thing You don't know what you're talking about, you clown forehead? Yeah, I know. If the stock market isn't gambling, then why does that dude's tie look like a casino? That's true. Let me press the point. Back in 1999, early 2000, the dot-com bubble. Who was left holding the bag? Who took the big losses? It was the little guy. Back then, they weren't called retail investors. They were called the little guy. Fast forward to today. Who's... I mean, 2008 market crash. The people that got fucked over in the end is the little guy. The people that got shit on the entire time is the little guy. Nobody... I mean, there's still plenty of people who obviously fucking credit the big banks for uh, this, this gigantic market failure that they played an instrumental role in, in putting together, and so did the Democratic Party, and so did the Republican Party. Shouts out to Bill Clinton. Sucks, um, Sag. But, but ultimately, when you look back and you fucking hear, uh, you hear neoliberals try to justify what happened in the housing market crash, they say, well, it was fucking middle-class people that were uh, buying houses that they just could not afford. And that's what it was. They were... They were just, uh, they were, they were going out beyond their means and that's why it happened. And it's because that's why we need to have, that's why we need to have, uh, money safely stored in the hands of those who know what to do with it. <clears throat> why would you bet on red if 66 of the time it comes up black? Anyway. But ultimately, the people that get fucked over is literally the little guy. Like, it is literally the little guy. It's the people that are buying into this push right now because they hear the memes and they, like, put way too the much into it. Stonks. That are going to get fucked over uh, in the end when, when people start pulling out. The short and simple way of describing to you the 2008 market, uh, housing market uh, crash is uh, predatory lending, okay? Is banks offering predatory lending and then knowing full well that those mortgage payments were going to fail and then literally betting on them failing while continuing to engage in that same practice that they knew was bad. Okay. Yo, hassle. Who cares about 2008, bro? Move on. Yeah, you're right. You good videos on Jordan's thread. We'll take a look at this in a second. It's great. I love the copium from so these, uh, these, these big uh, trade boys, these big stonk boys, these people who are running around as the, as the, the uh, industry understanders going to be left holding the bag oh, when GameStop inevitably comes back down to earth. We've already got Melvin Capital, a big hedge fund, requiring an infusion of funds. That's why I'm pressing the point about the spillover effect, to, not just to the rest of the market, but to investing in general. I don't think oh, there's going to be any spillover, Stuart, because these big boys, the hedge funds, understand the game that they're playing. They know what they're exactly. doing when they're shorting. They know the exposure. Anyone who tries to tell you that there is like a whiplash, uh, there is going to be like, you know, the, the fucking average investor is getting harmed from this. No, the average investor is only going to get harmed from this when the big boys start making money again, when GameStop's price oh, no, corrects itself, okay? 
But like for the time being, right now, the people pushing are fucking actually regular average Joes. A, a, a big chunk of it is like retail investors. And those are the ones who are literally directly taking the money from fucking hedge funds that have absolutely abused the system for far too fucking long. They're milking it, okay? So anyone who tells you like, oh no, it's the, it's the average Joe that's suffering right now is lying to you. If they say they're going to suffer tomorrow, then that's another thing. But if they're saying the average Joe is suffering right now, they're fucking lying to you, okay? This, these are hedge funds. Like, you never get a perfect fucking villain, okay? Hedge funds are Lex Luthor. Like, they are literally the perfect villain from a leftist POV, okay? From the, the eyes of the average American okay. worker, they are literally the perfect villain. It's not like, it's not like they're, they're doing a net benefit to society, okay? They literally only work with the wealthiest investors on the planet. Four months okay? of enjoying your content. And they Keep do shit the like work, this sir. all the fucking time. So, it's great. It is literally great. Three. Betting that you'll lose your job? What do you mean? Me? Or are you saying that, like... I don't get notifications from your channel anymore. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Why are political Andy's on both sides trying to claim this as their win? LMAO. Wall Street bets ain't famous for their right or left policies. Wait, what? I'm not saying that this is like leftist action, my friend. I'm not stupid. I'm not delusional. Even even by talking about the Wall Street bet shit, there's like a bunch of there's an influx of fucking weirdos in my chat that are uh, coming uh, crawling out of the woodwork to be like. Hey, shut up, you mongoloid. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, actually. Like, GameStop stock is so fucking good. You're just jealous that you didn't get, it, get in on it early on like I did. Like, dude, okay. Anyway. At Hussein Abbey siphon these big boys' money straight into my <clears> portfolio, <throat> please. Hedge funds, uh, hedge funds manage money for the wealthiest of the wealthy. Okay, they are Maybe the wealthiest today, of MCA the wealthy, the, the like people that they are operating with. There are some hedge funds that manage like so pension funds and shit like that, but ultimately, hedge funds literally are fucking. And even those hedge funds, if they're engaging in these sorts of risky fucking trades, then they're pieces of shit that should be punished. And the Democrat or Republican pieces of shit that gave your fucking pension funds over to those hedge funds to literally do shit like this instead of investing, uh, investing alongside uh, the, the stock market in general are scumbags, okay? Like, they're such pieces of shit that deserve to be fucking punished. They are so bad that they're literally fucking worse than Jeff Bezos. I cannot think of another person that I think is like singularly uh, bad other than like literally fucking hedge funds because Jeff Bezos exploits the shit out of his employees, okay? But there's still a fucking product in the other side of this, okay? There's still like delivery, there's a product. Hedge funds literally move, just move money around, okay? They take money from those who have a tremendous amount of intergenerational wealth and they make Games more money off of that by engaging in this sorts of fucked actions like overshorting uh, companies that are already uh, uh, dying. they have they also know Gosh, that they're facing retail they investors who will gang up on them as other hedge funds will tend to do and gang up on uh, guys that they know who have big short positions and try and force them the stocks higher this has been going on this is a very it's a principled game and it's everybody knows how to, and understands how it's played so the fact that melvin got caught in this i sorry that says sorry you lose um retail has done a great job of going after a lot of these shorts and actually ganging up on them this is just part of trading and i think this is the welcome to the new world. This is, we're going to see a lot more of this. We saw it in AMC. We're going to see it in a lot of other stocks, I think, continually as retail's power increases. And I think we see more and more retail investors coming into the market and working off the, these sites, the Reddit sites and some of these other chat room sites, gaining a lot of force. And they're going to be a force. Without liquidity, it would be way harder to invest in companies. Wide. And companies would have less cash to innovate with? Yeah, I know, man. If only there was a way to solve that liquidity problem, dude. Shit. No, the only way to do it is by 
uh, crunching numbers, you're right. Uh, innovation, innovation does not exist without the stock market. This is correct. I mean, if you have a problem with liquidity, then uh, I guess you're a big fan of uh, Keynesian economics. You're a big fan of fucking uh, uh, taking money and distributing it back to uh, public resources, public funds, uh, actual workers as well. But uh, also on top of that, I'm sure you're uh, a huge fan of uh, higher taxes so that uh, the government can appropriately fund uh, innovation, publicly funded research. They don't actually care about the little guy. They're just mad the little guy's doing what the big hedge fund managers constantly do. Yeah, they're doing the exact opposite of what hedge funds do. They're doing the exact oh, opposite yeah. of what that hedge fund, Melvin Capital, literally was doing. Except in this circumstance, the, the uh, capital required to take on something like that is, is tremendous. Board five and you don't have like a, a fucking $2 billion dollar cash, cash infusion to the Wall Street Bets uh, portfolio. You literally have to do it by being like, this is a good idea, and then getting other people on board. So it's infinitely, more, uh, it's infinitely more difficult than what hedge funds do. And if they were to turn around and try to fucking uh, regulate this behavior, they were to say like, oh, well, it's actually illegal, this kind of uh, stock uh, manipulation, then why the fuck are hedge funds in existence? Anyway, bro, you've been live for a fucking hour and I've been sitting in what I thought was offline chat waiting for you to come online and Twitch just never showed me you were on RIP. Wait, how? Are you a retail investor? Fuck no, dude. Are you fucking insane? I own zero stonks. I think I have a 401k somewhere, but... I don't know how much money is in it uh, from the Young Turks, and that's pretty much it. Bro, imagine coming to me and asking me if I'm a fucking retail investor, dude. Yeah. Dude, that's so funny. Investors In the meantime, a video here. game retailer GameStop is set to continue their head-spinning ascent today. Shares are now up more than 60% pre-market amid an ongoing battle between bullish day traders and hedge fund short sellers that have bet against the stock. GameStop shares have now risen some 700% year-to-date. Christine Romans is here with us on this story. Christine, now look at this price action. It's absolutely eye-watering the the market analyst in my dad bought amc and bb stocks last month his portfolio is now skyrocketing why because he's just a fucking boomer like why would you ever why would you buy amc stocks i guess amc kind of makes sense me is cringing at the frothiness and all the analogies that, that we can make here but it, there is a story here beneath the surface of hedge funds the big guys defense, shorting this amazing. and smaller yeah. players retail investors buying it and making windfall profits at least on paper at the expense of those short sellers. I mean, right. it's like a David versus Goliath story, or it's a storyline in the TV show Billions, or it's a Michael Lewis story uh, <laughs> novel. You know, it's all, all those things above. wrapped in one. It's so <laughs> interesting. And people keep talking about it and, and, and talking about GameStop. Look, the, the fundamentals of the company have been rough here. You know, they ha they're not making any money. They've been closing stores. Uh, you see these big short positions in the stock. And then you this the Reddit board, this Wall Street bets Reddit message board it's almost like a populist trader uprising to support the stock um, with these buying of the out of the money uh, options and really hurting the big guys so it's just been this interesting revolt that somebody's making a lot of money on someone is not and certainly is far out of line with the fundamentals uh, of this company you know it's funny in some cases people